Come to Lethbridge and join an innovative community for entrepreneurs. With more than a quarter of the 100,000 population under the age of 34, Lethbridge brims with energy. We'll help you to kickstart, innovate, and grow. Lethbridge, Southern Alberta's hub for innovation and technology. It's the bright choice for business builders. Go to chooselethbridge.ca slash entrepreneur and we'll help you move and grow in Lethbridge. Welcome to Canada's podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. Hello and welcome to Calgary's podcast with Mario Tanaguzzi on Canada's podcast network. Joining me today is Matt Diddlejan, who is CEO of Glacier, a Calgary-based marketing and advertising company. Thanks for joining us today, Matt. Thanks for having me, Mario. Happy to be here. Okay, let me just start by asking you just uh, a little bit about Glacier uh, and what you guys do. Sure. So Glacier, we're, we're an advertising company and we specialize in advertising good things to kids. So we advertise things like higher education, health and wellness, career opportunities, that sort of stuff. And so we actually have the largest high school ad, word, ad network in, uh, in high schools all across North America. We have the largest student influencer advertising network and we do a lot of digital marketing. And we do, uh, I'd say the majority of our clients are in higher education, so colleges, universities, that kind of thing. But we also do work for, for governments as well. And we do a lot of, uh, we're doing some work right now for mental health charities. And mental health is really a big focus that we're, that we're really working on right now to help make the next generation the most mentally resilient generation ever. So that's, that's Glacier in a nutshell. So what do you mean by kids? <laughs> what do you, sure. Where do, you, where do you, uh, you target? Uh, what kind of age group? Sure. So we, we typically work with 13 to 24. <laughs> that's, that's kind of our wheelhouse. So we have, like I said, the largest high school ad network. So we work with a lot of high school students. That's, that's uh, uh, an audience that we work with quite frequently, but then sometimes we go a little bit younger and then sometimes we go a little bit older as well. But that 13 to 24 age bracket. Okay, and tell me just a little bit about the history of uh, Glacier. When did you start it, and uh, and um, and I guess the why, why it came into existence? Sure. So we started in May 2012. Uh, that was in my last year of university. I started with a business partner of mine. We were we were friends from school, and we had been in student government together and everything like that. And we started it. I mean. I, I wish I had some beautiful story about the, you know, this big why, this big purpose, but honestly, we just wanted to start a company at that time. And we just ran through a laundry list of ideas of, of companies that we could start. And we initially came up with the idea of, of um, putting ads on, on tabletops in, in the student center. At, we went to the University of Calgary. Okay. And it was, always, it was always a student marketing company. We always loved you know, finding creative and clever ways of advertising to students. We had done that in student marketing or student government, I should say. Uh, and then, and then we started selling the ads in between classes and, and then we wanted to scale the company near the end of our, our uh, university tenure. I mean, we started in our last year of school and we decided to, to try and scale and, and we ran into some really fierce competition. It turns out that it was a very crowded market already for advertising to college students. Yeah. And so we decided why not try a little bit younger and go to high school students. No one had done it before and, and we figured we could do it. And so we did, we got a few high schools on board. They were really excited about the idea. And, and, and then we really thought to ourselves, you know, who, who would be great to ad advertise this audience? And we, we knew that it was always, it's a very impressionable demographic. And so we have a big responsibility to this day. Ethics are still a huge part of what we do and a big part of our philosophy. And so we decided why not higher education? It's such a good fit. They, they want high school students always, they're always trying to build brand. The high school principals would likely be on board and it's great for kids to show them the variety of different options. So that's, that's really how the idea started to synthesize and then uh, it started to spread all across Calgary and then, and then before we knew it, Alberta and then BC and then Ontario. Now we're in, I think, 20 or 30 states in the US as well, so we're international and wow. they're adding on other products. and. And then from there, we started realizing the impact we could have on kids. So it, it, it's really snowballed into that. So I'm curious, uh, Matt, how do you reach that demographic, that age group? Like, what are the key things um, uh, that, uh, you know, would resonate with them? 
Yeah, it, it all really comes down to the right channels and then the right creative on the right channels. And we, we've seen this a lot with a lot of our clients, especially in higher ed. Higher ed's typically a little bit slower to adopt than some of the other industries, but they, they just are not on the right channels. You know, we, we do a lot of research to find out where higher ed is advertising and where, where students are. And it's just a complete disconnect, you know, like, like 85% of kids are on Snapchat and TikTok, and yet less than 10% of higher ed is advertising on Snapchat and less than 2% is advertising on TikTok. So the, the first step is just getting the channels right. And uh, we see a lot of clients that are just not doing that correctly. They're still trying to advertise on radio to get to Gen Z. They're still trying to advertise on Facebook even to get to Gen Z. And it just doesn't work. Or news so the first step, <laughs> or the newspaper even. yeah like that we we still see higher ed advertising newspaper trying to get to hire to students it just doesn't make any sense yeah. um <laughs> and then the creative is the big second piece you know and that's why we're such advocates of influencers because yeah. like we've seen we've seen some stats like 99 percent of millennials do not trust content that comes from a brand so they just do not trust the content that's coming out of the brand's creative divisions. And so that's why influencers are so effective because they create the content, they already have the established trust with their, with their audience, and they know what content resonates really well. So it's all about the right content, right channels. So how, um, uh, how would you define, you know, we use that word influencers a lot and it's tossed around quite a bit. Uh, how would you define uh, an influencer? Who is an influencer? Influencers, there's really a, a quite a spectrum. So it, it can go all the way from nano in, from someone who's a nano influencer, which you know is around a thousand followers, all the way up to uh, and then in there you have the, the micro influencers, which is about ten thousand to you know we'd say about three hundred thousand followers. That's a, that's a micro influencer, and then from three hundred and above, that's where you get into the macro influencer, the celebrity influencer type status, and and. An influencer can fall on that spectrum all the way, but basically an influencer is someone who has established the trust of their audience and they, and they have their own defined niche, whatever it might be, whether it's sometimes it's fashion, sometimes it's sports, sometimes it's, you know, mental health, whatever it might be. And they, they have a trust established with their audience. That's, that's really what an influencer is. I want to, I'm curious about when you're talking about some of those numbers, uh, uh, when you're uh, mentioning a thousand, three thousand, or, or whatever, uh, are you talking uh, like total followers? Or are you talking just specific followers, say A on LinkedIn, A B on TikTok or Instagram, uh, for those numbers? Typically, it's platform specific. So when I say an influencer has fifty thousand followers, they typically have that on one platform. You know, some influencers they do have uh, they do have large followings on on multiple platforms, but by and large. To influencers are, are typically really good at one platform. So when I say 50,000 followers, I might mean Instagram or TikTok or whatever it might be. Yeah. Okay. Super then. Um, and the key, I just, I want to go back a little bit on, on the key of reaching these people. Like, you know, uh, you know, not to, <laughs> not to uh, compartmentalize or, or, uh, or uh, be too general in nature, but, but, you know, you know, they, they live in a world that is fast paced, you know, scrolling through things like crazy, right? And, uh, you know, uh, very uh, attention deficit disordered types, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's not just this age group, it's society in general these days, right? So how do you capture their attention? Because uh, obviously, you know, I would think you'd have to capture their attention, what, in within a couple of seconds? Yeah, and I mean, I think the other thing is people will watch good content. And I think that's a more general principle. You know, it, I don't think it really matters if they're 13 or, or 53. People watch good content. And I think we've seen that with things like Breaking Bad, for example, you know, which is a very, or even uh, Game of Thrones, like these longer form content pieces that are very long. It's yeah. like, like Breaking Bad is like one big, long movie. And people are very engaged throughout the whole thing. So I, I don't necessarily think that, uh, you know, like, like people have this attention deficit thing. I think people will watch good content if it's worth it. Same with podcasts, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast sometimes get into the three and a half hours and tons of kids listen to that. So I think, I think it depends on the good content, but uh, on the plat on platforms like TikTok, for example, which is 
which is the the new powerhouse with with Gen Zs and, and the demographic we've been talking about. Yeah. It's certainly within a matter of seconds. You have to capture attention, yeah. or else you're going to get a quick scroll. Absolutely. So, so when you're talking about, like, uh, you know, there's uh, a phrase like, you know, in, in marketing, right? That talk about content is king, right? But re it's really video content, uh, really that that is king, right? Oh, sorry, the internet broke out there for a second. But yes, it is absolutely video content is the one that resonates the most with Gen Z and, and youth today, absolutely. And we, we advise our, our clients pretty strongly that you have to be investing in video because from the, the stats we've seen, the other, the other more text heavy platforms like Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, they just do not have the youth audience on it today. All the, all the platforms that have the, the youth audience like Instagram, uh, TikTok, Snapchat, it's all video. So absolutely video is key to resonating with the youth audience. What about YouTube? Having uh, yeah. YouTube stuff. Yeah, YouTube absolutely as well. YouTube for sure is, is the, the big four platforms with youth are TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. Those are really the big four and then what are worth investing all the time into. Tech Connect, a center for entrepreneurship and innovation in Lethbridge, has been springboarding entrepreneurs to success for 10 years and counting. Our spirit of innovation is a way of life. We have an incredible environment. Our innovators are not afraid to stand apart because they know that in Lethbridge, we are brighter together. We are Lethbridge. Come and join us. Go to chooselethbridge.ca slash entrepreneur and we'll help you move and grow in Lethbridge. But it's, it's got to be hard though, right? Uh, for, uh, as you mentioned, right? Some of these, say, higher education uh, institutions, right? That they're, they're not run by... Uh, 20, 20, 25 year old people, right? They're run by uh, middle-aged people for the most part. Uh, so it's hard for maybe them to get their head around this whole concept of what they should be doing. Because it, you know, and, and news, you know, I come from the newspaper background. Newspapers were like that for ages, right? Uh, they didn't adapt and many still haven't adapted to the, to the uh, digital age and uh, what's mm -hmm. happening out there in social media, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of institutional inertia. And I mean, that's, that's also why, you know, I have a job is because we are much faster to adapt and to figure out these new platforms and, and new technologies and new methods of marketing much more than, than higher education. And, yeah. and I mean, yeah, higher education, they're, they're, in a, they're in a tough spot because they're a marketing, they're trying to be a marketing agency within this academic institution and they have pressures coming from all different sides. Yeah. Whether be the executive office and you know trying to trying to push their new vision about being a research institution or wherever it might be and then they have uh, the recruitment office also trying to push them so they're 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 really trying to appease all these different stakeholders and they, they've got a tough job and then they also have to keep up to date with what students want there's more and more pressures on universities to to be for creating their students as job ready so it's just that they have a really difficult job and, and that's why we yeah we love we love working with higher ed because they yeah. are so important in society and, and yet they have a very difficult job to do so I'm curious where did the name come from glacier yeah we uh, we used to we used to joke that there that there used to be three co-founders of glacier and we lost one on a mountain expedition trip but that's not true actually <laughs> <laughs> jokingly uh, no it was just well, I mean, you know, I've, I've been born and raised in Calgary and I love, I love this city. I love the mountains. I love, I love the Alberta values and everything it stands for. And so Glacier was really just a homage to, to, the, to the territory, to the region. I, I love the mountains. I go skiing and mountain biking all the time and it's just kind of my place to go and unwind. So Glacier is really just a homage to the, the mountains in Alberta. What did you take at university, by the way? I did... I like to call my, my first couple of years an academic adventure, and I I did uh, biological science and then history, oh, wow. and technology, and what, whatever. I just dipped my toe into every faculty, and then I ended up doing a a bachelor of commerce degree specializing in operations management. Took me took me about six years, but it was well worth well worth the wait. Oh, okay, so what? Tell me uh, about being an entrepreneur. What do you like about it? I love I love the process of creation of of coming up with an idea and then seeing it come to fruition and and being able to solve someone's problem is just a rush and 
And I, I, I view entrepreneurship as, as one of the highest forms of art because you, you know, the world is basically your canvas and, and, you, and you get to create this, this beautiful creation that, you know, it, it involves all the elements of design and, and everything like that and the branding and everything like that. And then it also involves humans, which, and it's just this big, beautiful, moving art installation that solves a problem for the world. So I just see it as something that is just so fun to do. And then, hmm. I mean, I, I also just love the freedom that comes along with it. I mean, you could argue that that was a big reason why I started the company was because freedom yeah. was one of my core values and that's always meant a lot to me. And uh, I just love the freedom that comes along with it. I love, I love being able to see the people on my team grow and develop into, the, into, their, into their, their best possible selves. It's just, and I love the work that we do at Glacier. So it's just everything about entrepreneurship, I think, is just a, an absolute blast. And I'm just wow. very grateful that I stumbled into it early in life. Now, it must be some stuff you don't like about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think there's, certainly, there's certainly more difficult days than others, especially during COVID. There was a lot of, a lot of long walks with my, my fiance, who has, uh, she's, my, she's my rock, and I'm so grateful for her. But there was a lot of long walks and a lot of very difficult discussions during COVID. But I, I, I like to think back to the, the, the stoic principle of amor fati, which is love fate, and, and not just accept fate or whatever should happen, but actually love it because it's a it's a great test and a great talent a great challenge and and like when we went into the the pandemic first at glacier i told the team i said you know it's it's kind of like what churchill said when when they were going into the second world war this is going to be our finest hour because wow. it's, it's going to be very difficult it's going to be super hard we're going to have to work harder than we've ever had to with fewer resources than we've ever had to to get through this thing and I mean, now we're in, we're in a really good situation. Uh, our, our company, we're in a better place than we were before the pandemic. So yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there is difficult days for sure, but it's kind of like, I get excited about it because it's gonna make us more strong. And so I, I generally look, look upon the challenge with, with great excitement. Now we all know that, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur is basically a 24 seven job. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any time for other interests? Absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, one of, one of my core values is freedom. And I, I do, I do love having uh, life outside the office. And I mean, when I, when I am not at the office, I'm, I'm generally thinking about the company all the time for sure. But yeah, I have lots of, lots of hobbies. Like I love skiing. I love mountain biking. Um, I got into ant farming recently, actually. I, I've always, wow. <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've always had a love of ants and I've always meant to start an ant colony. I just love ants. And uh, my fiance bought me a, a starter ant colony kit for Christmas. So I've been getting into that recently. <laughs> what, did, what do you think that uh, passion or interest came from? I remember when I, I mean, I did, bio, I did a year of biology in, in university and just learning about a ton of different organisms and things like that. But I remember learning about ants and, and just how they're just this one, they're like, one organism yet also many and they somehow organize themselves and uh, you know if there's a flood that happens the ants will just naturally form a raft and the worker ants will for go on the bottom and then they'll throw the, the the larvae on top of it and the queen and the ones on the bottom will knowingly drown and the, the raft will just float into safety and then they'll just rebuild again so and they do this all without, you know, central organization. It's, it's unbelievable. And the more, the more I learn about ants, the more I just get absolutely fascinated by them. So I, yeah. I don't know where it came from. But I'm the yeah. other way around. I'm usually trying to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, don't tell my landlord that I, uh, <laughs> at the office, that I have a, a whole bunch of wood ants. <laughs> I'm calling up here. Don't tell them that. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, super then. And uh, so you grew up and born and raised in Calgary, Matt? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, obviously, as a business owner uh, mm -hmm. and an entrepreneur, what what are the good things about being in Calgary? I I love Calgary. I think I think it's it's just got such a can do attitude, such an entrepreneurial spirit. I, I have friends that come here from Ontario. They've moved here, and they tell me that they're blown away at how everyone is either 
it seems like everybody has their own side hustle or entrepreneurial ambitions or whatever it might be. I think, I think that type of entrepreneur entrepreneurial attitude is just really ingrained in the city. And I think, I also think that Calgarians are very resilient. And I, I think a big part of it is the inclement and really cold weather in the winter. I mean, life, life is hard enough. And then you throw on, you've got to go outside when it's minus 35 and just, you know, deal with the other, <laughs> challenges that befall you just because of that cold weather, whether it be frozen pipes, your car doesn't start or whatever. It just, I think it just makes Calgary is tough. So I love that element. And then I also just, like I said, I love the mountains. The mountains are such a big part of my heart. And so just being able to drive to the mountains and, and jump on my mountain bike and have world-class mountain biking within a 45 minute drive, I think is just remarkable. Okay, super. Thanks for joining us today, Matt. Absolutely. Happy to be here. All right, that was Matt Diddlejan, who is CEO of Glacier, a Calgary-based marketing and advertising company. This has been Calgary's podcast with Mario Tonaguzzi on Canada's Podcast Network. Thanks for joining us today. Bold, vibrant, technological. In Lethbridge, our spirit of innovation is more than just the way we do business. It's the way we live and the way we succeed. We'll help you to kickstart, innovate, and grow in Lethbridge, Southern Alberta's hub for innovation and technology. It's the bright, affordable choice for business builders. Go to chooselethbridge.ca slash entrepreneur, and we'll help you move and grow in Lethbridge.